What up, it's Spence Lee. Catch me on the next episode of Bodega Talks. Yeah, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to Bodega Talks. It's your boy, Black Zini, and on this episode, we're with Spence Lee, a rising star out of Somerset, New Jersey, whose triple threat talents, story, and work ethic has brought him in the limelight with rising indie labels, 88 Rising, and Ear Drummers. Growing up studying the art of his music as well as fashion, Spence would go from styling for Ray Shremard to being in the studio with Mike Will Made It and traveling across Asia with 88 Rising. He would drop projects like Upfall and 1012 with songs like Arriba, Write My Name, Nothing to Lose, and his newest song, White Tea. Mastering the five pillars filled with creativity and a message to spread, Spence Lee keeps it genuine with every intent to spread the culture his own way. What's good, bro? What up, bro? How's everything? Good, how are you? Chilling, chilling. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming, man. I appreciate well, thank you. Thank you for having me, bro. You yeah, already? Yes, yeah, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to Bodega Talks. It's your boy, Black Talks. Danny. We're in Soho today with uh, Somerset, New Jersey's very own Spence Lee. Spence Lee, what up? Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Tell the people a little bit about yourself. Shit. Um, I'm an artist, born and raised in Franklin, New Jersey, Somerset County, Exit 9. Um, I make music, make clothes, I'm a visual artists, I paint a little bit. Um, but just I'm an all around artist, visionary, creative, and um, yeah, that's basically what I do. Right, yeah. right. I'm Vietnamese, so, I'm Chinese, you know, Asian, very rare. Vietnamese and Chinese. Yeah, Vietnamese and Chinese. How that, how's that? Like, was that mom? My Asian? mom's Vietnamese, so she's a war refugee from Vietnam. Um, you know, she came over here in like the uh, 70s. 80s, grew up in New York, Washington Heights. My dad is first generation Chinese from Brooklyn, born and raised in Brooklyn. That's so um, yeah, my family is from New York. Yep. They, they Who brought y'all to Somerset? Um, I think they wanted to get, they wanted, they, they was done with the city life and they wanted to move home. Um, Cause I got an older brother, older sister too. They just wanted to move the family to like somewhere where where it's more just like calm. A little calmer. I yeah, feel that. So. Nah, it's lucky. I lived in Long Island, so it's pretty chill out there. Yeah, Long Island calm too. Yeah. I mean, it get wild where I was at. Nah, I'm facts. sure it get wild Every, in Long Island there's too. There's always so. the spots, but it's yeah. like, but it's, you know, we gotta it's drive to get there, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Uh -huh. You can't just walk down the block yeah. and be there, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a balance. All right, so Somerset, Jersey. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Jersey has whole bunch of different sounds. What would you yeah. describe yours as? My sound? Yeah. So I would describe it as like alternative hip hop. Um, you know, like I grew up just making hip hop music and, you know, studying the greats and stuff like that. But what I lean towards is melody and harmony. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I would just, I would call it alternative because I use a lot of, um, I use a lot of melodies and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I try to get on beats that are unique. But at its core, it's hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I'm, just, I'm, I'm expressing myself, expressing my truth through means of harmony and rhythm. You know what I mean? And spirit. Feel that? Yeah. It's perfectly. So you also said you're a clothing designer. What kind of what kind of clothes do you make? Shoot, uh, a lot of my stuff is like DIY. So like, you know, in these very streets in Soho, I used to just be, I used to paint on the street and um, paint on clothes. And me and my boy Dominique Mills, we would just be painting and making. Um, making clothes from scratch, you know, and I ran into a lot of legends like, you know, Virgil and Heron who, you know, encouraged me and gave me gave me good like game on, you know, just being a creative and doing things when you might not have the means or the resources and so my whole thing was making something out of nothing. So, you know, it cost me nothing to just get some paint. Yeah. Do some do some makeshift shut sewing and cut and sew or whatever. So a lot of my stuff is like um, paint and I, I started out with bleach and stuff like that and doing designs. The water like, bottle, bleach in the water bottle, you put a hole in the top. Yeah, I, I used to um, use a paintbrush with the bleach. But going back to the Jersey shit, man, shout out to Fetty Wap, shout out to Lauren Hill, and shout out to, um, you know, like I said, being in Jersey, we was around a lot of melodic stuff. Mm -hmm. So that influenced my sound a, a great deal. When I was a little older, that's when I started taking music seriously, like in 2014, I started, you know, getting, getting on my shit and like, I just feel like melody has always been ingrained in like my ear and my taste level of music. So, you know, there's a lot of legends that came from Jersey, like the Food Jesus shit, and I grew up on all that stuff. So, you know, gotta shout them out when we talk about Jersey. Oh man, what the fuck with it. Well, we're here at the deli. This is spot right here. What is it? Soho Olive Branch? Yeah. You ready to get some food? Yeah, see what we got After here. After you, man. Yeah. 
Alright. <laughs> yeah. Alright, man. So, yeah. that's part of our show. We give the artist $20 oh, to enjoy you, themselves in the deli. Thank you, bro. So, feel free. Make sure you catch. I'm giving free game to the people trying to stay healthy. Gotta get the organic dried mangoes. Feel me? You gotta get you some naturally alkaline spring water. Gotta get the organic coconut water. Get the ginger shot too. The mango back. All right, man. What you good? No, just good hydration. So. How did you first come to music? Like, when did this become a thing for you? Mm, so I think... Your chosen path. Yeah, so I had many paths growing up, man. I thought no, I, I was... I remember, we were talking about the making clothes yeah, and everything. Yeah, I had like, many paths. I was going to do so much shit. You know, I thought I was going to be a dancer, a track star. I thought I was going to do a lot of shit. But you know, in ninth grade, no, in eighth grade, I made my first song. And I was like, man, I really, this shit is fun. Like. And I was doing shit just for fun, music for fun. I never, you know, I, I always like Asian rapper, like in no way, you know? And then as I got older, I realized it was possible, you know, because <clears throat> dude from my town, Chino, he was Asian and he was like the best rapper in the town, you know, and he was, he was, he was moving the most work. He was doing all this shit, getting his own money, you know, at 18 and we looked up to him. He was fresh, had all the Jordans, iced out G-Shocks, all type of shit. So I was like, damn, he's actually fly. He's doing this shit in, like, in a player way. And um, he got he got killed in 2012. And then that's when I was like, all right. I always thought he was going to be the one to, you know, be the first Asian rapper that do it the right way. And, like, you know what I'm saying? Just do it. And and it's, he's somebody who this is, is on some, like, fly shit. And I was like, I'm going to continue that. And, you know, I, ha I also felt like I had a lot to say. And I felt like it was the best vehicle for me to, like, spread, spread my message for the youths. And for like, just anybody who resonates with just being somebody that's unique and believing in yourself and believing in like the skills and the gifts you get from God and using them. And just who believes in that, you know, and doing it despite what other people might expect or assume about you. So, you know, so it was around 2012. And then in 20, 2014, I met Mike Will. I met, you know, I met, um, I met the squad, the ear drummers. And that's, that's what really was a, a sign in my life where I was like, all right, God wants me to keep going on this path, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Fine, dope. Yeah. So you dropped um, White Tea, new song. Yeah. You spoke about being on the Yeezy show. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. was that like? That was um, it was a it was a great experience, man. It was um, uh, you know, I was I, that's when I, I that's when I was doing like modeling and shit. I thought I was, you know, gonna just pursue that um, alongside everything and. It was dope because um, uh, Vir Virgil and Heron Preston, they actually was the ones who like got me into that shit. Like, like, yo, come to the casting, skip the line, blah, blah, blah. And then I walked in the room, Kanye and all of them was there. And they just, everyone stopped talking, they looked at me. They was like, oh yeah, just take pictures of him in the outfit he got on. And then I was like, I know, I know for a fact I got the job right then because I'm like, I just, all the air just was, you know what I'm saying? All the air in the room was just And then, you know, Virgil was putting me in the Yeezys and all type of shit. It was surreal, cause you know, I grew up looking up to these guys, like mm -hmm. going to fashion night out in Soho and seeing like paparazzi run down and chase Virgil and um, Kanye, like in the Rosewood era, just chasing them down the block for like three, four blocks. And, and you know what I'm saying? Just, I remember- just to get that one picture. Yeah, just to get a picture. And I'm just seeing that. And then now I'm there in the room working with these guys. And, you know, and then, you know, eventually, you know, it catapulted me into, into more and more opportunities. So it was it was a blessing. So um, you're on 88 Rising. Yeah. But you're also working with other people, correct? Yeah, Mike and Drummers? Will. Yeah, drummers. Mike mm -hmm. Will made it. How's that? Okay, so which came first? And do you have a preference? Um, what came first was, so in 2014, I met Mike Will. Right, I met Mike Will, made it, and that's um, 
that's the ear drummers, right? So that came first. And when I met them, they just thought I was just doing clothes and being a fashion person, just fashion kid, Tumblr kid and shit. Mm -hmm. But they always, they, we got along quick and it was like, yeah, Yo, you gotta be part of the squad. Like, I fuck with your style, you know, and I, I'm, I was a fan of Mike Will already. I was already hip to Ray Schremer and, you know, their music. And um, eventually one day Mike was like, yo, when you gonna start making music? And I'm just like, it's crazy because I got on, I, I, I'm already <laughs> making music. And then I played him the shit, you know, he was like, yo, you got some shit, bro. Like, let's, let's, keep, let's keep rocking. And then, you know, Mike Will is actually the one who introduced me to 88 Rising and um, introduced me to Sean from 88. And we had a conversation talked about what we want to do, um, you know, not just as artists, but like as far as bridging the cultures, right? Because, you know, 88, they got Asia on lock. They got a lot of influence over there. But Mike Will, he got a lot of, um, he got a lot of merit in America and just in music in general. So I just thought it was a dope thing for them both to be involved in my shit. Because, you know, Mike Will is the one who put me on to like being able to make a living off of music and mm -hmm. ear drummers and working with all those special producers really trained me as a musician and you know it allowed me to um evolve in that, in that sense and in 8 Rising they they make great content they make great videos and have great creativity and creative ideas they put me on festivals and shit in Asia so it's just a it's a it's a dope situation and so I, I wouldn't say I have a preference you know both of them it's, it's really it's, it's a fun thing it's to fun. be a part of it's two different sides yeah. each one has its roses and it's not traditional know? it's not like a traditional label where yeah. you know where you know a lot of people it's always talk about the label well. yeah. I hear that you know we're trying to do some new shit so we got to formulate it in a new formulate it in a new way alright so let's talk about your song Arriba that's like your best song I mean, at least most popular song. Yeah, streaming wise, you know yeah. What I'm I don't know what your best song will be. I'll let you answer that question. But what inspired that song? Um, so, what inspired it? I was just making music. You know, I, I just be in a flow state, just cooking up. And sometimes you stumble upon, you know, great ideas. And um, I was just freestyling to that beat. Shout out to Resource from the Ear Drummers. He had sent me the beat. I was like, damn, this shit is crazy. And I'm in the room, all the lights are off. I recorded it in my mom's house, in my old room. So I was just vibing to the beat. And then I did, I was freestyling to it for like six minutes. Or like I had looped the beat twice. And then by the end of the last loop, I was like, a la riva. And then and I was like, wait, hold on. I, I clicked back at it. I was by myself. So I'm just, I'm like, wait, that shit hard. Like, and I, did, I didn't, I wasn't, I never intend to do this shit, but it always be like the accidental shit that become the it become Man, the thing. moment of the song, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Becomes the whole so yeah, I, I was like, all right, I'll move that to the front. I start the song like that, and then I, you know, I just, you know, I just punched in from there, and then the song built itself. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just, you know, that was it was dope because these songs that I just make, I just be talking talking my shit on them, and like I be saying just shit that's true, you know what I mean? Like I know they're gonna judge me off the surface. But I raise a ball like good service. You know what I'm saying? Like just saying real shit. My life is a movie. Please no talking in the theater. Like just saying real shit. And I, my whole thing is just making sure that when I'm doing it, it's, it's on some fly shit too. Cause nobody wants to hear no preaching and you know yeah. all, you, everybody. Has to, we all have to do this. As a, we, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you should do this. Like I'm really on some shit. This is like this what I'm doing. If you fuck with my results and my and my uh, and what I got going on in my life, then this is what I'm doing. This is the, the um, codes and stuff that I'm living by. And, you know, if you want to follow along for the journey or take whatever you need to take from the swag, then that's what it is. And it's, it's free game. So I'm just, I'm just real thankful that people resonate with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and it, this stuff, it just goes up. You know, you, don't, you never know what's going to catch. You know, because I got, I got so many different types of songs, melodic songs. And, like, even, even right now, one of the songs that's about to, Go past that is all. It's like a dance hall song that I got called "Write My Name," okay. and it's got like mad melodies and and it's like a it's like a it's like a summer vibe, and that's like my trending right now, like my most popular song on Spotify. So, tell me about your upcoming projects. What 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 can you tell me about it? I know some shit be private until certain release dates and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, so. Okay, tell me. I can tell you it's executive produced by Mike Will made it. It's coming out under Ear Drummers and 88 Rising. Um, it's coming out first quarter next year. It's gonna have um, 
you know, a lot of a lot of the people that already are hip to my music, they they all have different wants from from out of me. You know what I mean? Like they all certain people want the vibey shit, certain people want the rap shit, certain people want the the hard shit, false. So I'm gonna give all of it. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's gonna be a variety of stuff. I'm gonna be touching on a lot of topics: spirituality, God. Um, just me being an individual and overcoming overcoming doubt, overcoming fear, complete. How many tracks? Uh, right now, I think it's around 12. Around 12, could be 11, but okay. it might be 12. Some any, any, any Features? plans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Slim Jimmy from Ray Shermer gonna be on there. Okay. Um, and then uh, so a couple guys, uh, well, one of my guys, Kakuyan, he uh, he's like my main producer who I've been working with like my whole my whole life for real. One of my musical mentors, he's featured on it too. Did a lot of production on it. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's really like it's really gonna be a thing where I showcase my my um, versatility as a songwriter and just like my um, just like complexity of like my th my mind and just you know speaking on shit, what I see in the world and real life shit. In the next five years, where do you see yourself? Like, do you like? Do you, what do you plan on building outside of music? Um, next five years. So I, I really want to. Uh, I really want to establish myself as just somebody. Well, I'm going to establish myself as somebody who is like a, like a real, like a real artist, like a real like a revolutionary artist, somebody that people can look at and, you know, like I feel like my specialty and what I'm realizing, my superpower is like giving other people ideas. So like people see me executing my ideas, I want that to give them an idea about themselves and feel motivated to pursue their ideas, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whether it's like just sparking, just sparking people's creativity and, um, you know, I'll, you know, of course, every artist wants a number one album, number one song, um, wants to go platinum. You know, I want all of that. But above all that, in five years, I want people to be like Spence Lee. Like, he's one of the ones. Like, you know, it wasn't just a song or it wasn't just a, a one hit, but it was like his albums. You know what I'm saying? His albums are good. His albums like got me through stuff. You know, like that's that's the main thing that satisfies me when people tell me they, they um, resonate with my music. It's like, oh, you know, I get messages sometimes and people be like, yo, like somebody posted, one of my friends posted him proposing to his girl to one of my songs. <laughs> and, and then like the next day you might have somebody be like, yo, I was going through a depression and like I was bumping this song a lot and it was helping me just, you know, get back on my shit. Or I was riding through the town and doing this. I was working out, working out to your music. People living life to my music is the main thing that's like, you know, I always wanted that. And then also I want to get more into the health, the health and wellness space. Cause um, you know, I feel like I was able to help myself a lot through like different um lifestyle, lifestyle changes like healthy, healthy eating and like medicinal yeah. herbs and shit like that. And I want to get into that space because I feel like I have a lot a lot of knowledge and experience on myself, you know, like I was able to, you know, do a lot of things through diet and exercise alone. I want to help other people do that too, because I feel like that's the missing component. That's just true. just um, in our age group, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. a lot of, you know, not all of us are blessed to just be like looking young forever, you know, and, and a lot of that comes from like diet and exercise, health and life, lifestyle and shit like that. So, you know, eventually I want to help people. All right, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you, bro. It's Thanks been a for, pleasure. for the opportunity, bro. You already. Let me know you got a show or listening or something like that. Ah, yeah, Definitely sure. looking to pull through. It's on the ground, too. Hell yeah. But yeah, bro. This is definitely a good time, man. It's not too cold out. Yeah. I did this other joint the other day, man. I was in the interview shivering and shit, bro. Ha! <laughs> ah, don't worry. It happens to us, too, man. I'm telling you. That shit is definitely going to be some different shit. But yeah, man, that's me. Gotcha. Definitely going to tap in, though. Like Zena. Until next time, bro. Yes, Thank you for being here.